a lie if I've never heard his voice. So in order for me to trust God, he has to speak to me after I heard the word. The second consequence of me hearing the word is I trusted in him. I trusted him. And to this end, Paul says, based off that trust, what he did was he sealed you with the Holy Spirit of promise. I'm excited. Yes, sir. He sealed you with the Holy Spirit of promise. That that right there, that what I have in my heart is trust for Jesus Christ because I heard the word of the Lord. To that end, he says what the Holy Spirit did was seal you. And he calls the Holy Ghost the spirit of promise. John, let me tell you a story. Visitor, let me tell you a story. <laughs> So, uh, pay no attention to the people around me. <laughs> Just listen, listen to me. So, when I am, when I was down in Mississippi, Nash and I went to Mississippi. We were we were about eight and six. He was eight, and I was six. And uh, they woke us up in the morning to uh, go pick berries. They had acres and acres of land. So we woke up early in the morning before the, really the sun got hot, and we went to go pick berries. We were eating the berries and picking them at the same time, but. It, it was okay. So we, we come back with baskets of berries. When we come back in, my great grandmother, uh, Anna, she she was in the, the kitchen with some of my, my grandfather's sister, and they were making this stew kind of thing on on an old, very old stove. And they were making this stew and they told us to bring the berries in and we they washed the berries. And then they dumped the berries like in this water that was mixed with salt, a little sugar, or something else they put in there. And uh, they let the berries stew for a while, okay? On another pot, they were melting some wax in another pot. So they, they had the mason jars. Remember the old mason jars that had the, 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 the tops that had the, the thing in the middle and then you screw it on there? Remember that? that, that so that's kind of jar that they had. So they put the berries in the jars. And I, I remember <coughs> pressing down on it to get some juice in it and then make sure they get enough berries in there. And they set them on the windowsill to let them cool for a while. While they're cooling, or after they, they cool, they, they put the, the seal, they put the, uh, the, the top on the jar, tightened it, and then they dipped it over the seal, they dipped the top of it into some wax, the wax that was warm. After they did that, they put it back on the window seal. Then they put it in a box, and then she told us to take them home to our grandmother. Maybe about 10 years later, my grandmother's in the kitchen, and she decides she wants to make a pie. She says, give me those. Uh, the, that fruit that's in the, the counter there. Now to this end, they had been spiders and dirt because they had just left it up there and forgot all about it. This is 10 years later. And I remember picking the berries. And so I say to my grandmother, you know, these, these, this fruit can't be good because of how long Come on, the fruit has been in the jar. Yes, yes. What she said yeah. to me okay. was yeah. that the wax that they put on the berries served as a seal. The seal keeps out all the contaminants from getting into the jar. She says that when I open the berry and I break the seal, the berries are as fresh today as they were 10 years ago. To that end, when we were born again, we were dipped in the wax of God's spirit. And the wax of God's spirit sealed us so that when Jesus comes back and opens us up, the promise that he made us is still good. We are preserved. He sealed us with the Holy Spirit of promise so that the trust that we had after I heard the word will never go back. You cannot trust God for years and years and years and live through disappointments and heartbreak and all those different kind of things unless the Holy Spirit has sealed you. Yes, to the point that even though you're upset and disappointed, I cannot go back on what I know because I have been sealed. Yes, sir. Thank you, Jesus. And the promise is still alive. Thank you, Jesus. It does not matter who leaves or comes. The promise is not contingent upon anybody else. The promise is contingent upon the seal. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. And there is integrity in the seal that God put on. Yes, sir. Yes. So 
you never have to question, is God going to do it or not? Right. He promised you he was going to yes. do it Thank and you. sealed it on the inside. Thank Thank you, Jesus. That Thank is, God. we have been sealed Hallelujah. with the Holy Spirit of promise. Uh, look, look, look down, um, verse 14. Thank you, Jesus. He is still talking about the Spirit, okay? Thank you. Who is the earnest of our inheritance unto the redemption of the purchased possession unto the praise of his glory. The language is, is, is convoluted, I know, but let me, let, me, let me explain it to you. He is still talking about the Holy Spirit of promise. He says the Holy Spirit of promise is earnest. It, it's a down payment. Mm -hmm. It is earnest money is that if I'm getting ready to buy a house, I go to the realtor, to the buyer, and I put up a percentage of what the house is to let everybody know that God, I got a bid in on the house. <coughs> I, I want to purchase this. What, what Paul says, a purchase possession. He is saying that the spirit of God, the spirit of promise, is the down payment on you. Mm -hmm. That when we were born again, he gave us his spirit. Mm -hmm. And when he gave us his spirit, his spirit is basically earnest currency in the economy of God. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. He says that I want you so much I am going to put myself on the inside of you and then seal myself on the inside of you. And this is going to be towards your redemption. Yeah. The, the, the purchase, possession. Here's where I want you to identify yourself. When, when Christ was on the cross, he purchased us. We are his possession. We belong to him. He purchased us with his own blood gave us his spirit to let the devil know yeah. he and she belongs to me. Yeah. That's right. yeah. You can make no claim on them Thank because I gave them my spirit. And if my spirit is there, that means they belong to me. Yeah. You have been marked. Yes, sir. Yeah. That means that there's a, a for sale sign on the front lawn and there's a sign, a staff that goes on it that says sold. <laughs> Yeah. That means the devil had to keep walking to the yeah. next house because I have been belonged to him preacher. because he has given me the earnest. Preach. Preach. He says, I'm not just going to promise you. I am going to invest in you. Yeah. I'm going to put up what is precious to me to let you know that I am serious about this transaction. Mm. You, we are his, his first possession. Uh, Verse 15, wherefore I also, after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, and love unto all the saints, cease not to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers. Here's what he prayed for, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of him. If you've ever known this every Sunday, I pray that God would give me the spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of him. I, what I want you to understand, number one, is that, 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 that wisdom is a spirit. And we have a right to pray that God give me the spirit of wisdom. Mm -hmm. Give me the spirit of knowledge. Do you know that these are your utilities that God gives you to navigate and get the victory in this world? Yeah. There are things that you will not know until you tap into God's spirit. Mm -hmm. I am not talking about speaking in tongues and falling all out and having the, the, the spirit run you around the church. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about I need the spirit every day in my life. I need the spirit on my job. I need the spirit in my home. I need the spirit. And he said, this is what I prayed to God for you to have because I heard of your faith. I prayed that with your faith that God would give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation and knowledge from him. Verse, next verse, that the eyes of your understanding yes. might be in light. Yes. That literally when God came into your life, he said, let there be light all over again. Yes. Illumination. You cannot see what to do unless you have wisdom and knowledge running in your life. And he says, along with that, you need understanding. Yeah. Help me to understand, to decipher knowledge. Yeah. It is one thing for me to read something in a book, and it's another thing for me to understand what I am reading. Mm. It is one thing for me to see what's happening in my life, and it's another thing for me to understand what is happening in my life. Let the eyes of my understanding, let them be enlightened, that I may know what is the hope. Look at your Bible, verse 14. What is the hope of his calling? What is the hope of his calling? This is what I want you to know, that God did all of this stuff for himself. 
He did it through you, but he did it for him. What is the hope of his calling? The intention of God towards me. God, what do you want? What is your intention? Okay, so you say, and I'm born again. And one day I'm going to go live with you, and I'm going to get a new robe and a new crown and some new shoes and all those different kind of things. But while I'm here, God, why did you call me to yourself? When, when, when I was a kid and I was playing outside, my mother would call my name if she wanted something. I think I did it once and I learned. When she called my name, she hollered my name, I hollered back, what? Oh, gee, wow. Mm -mm. And you have to make that mistake in order to know that you actually made a mistake. Yeah. I never made that mistake again. <laughs> because what I had to learn was that when she called me, mm -hmm. it did not mean that I'm supposed to ask her, what do you want? Mm -hmm. It means that I'm supposed to come to her. I will find out what she wants when I first come to her. God calls us to himself. We did not say when we were in saying, God, what you want. When he called us, we came. And when we came, then we start finding out, okay, why have you called me here? Mm. Out of all the people that was playing in sin and, 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 and drinking and going through all those changes, you called me out of that. It has to be a reason why you've called me mm -hmm. to you. Why did you save me and didn't save somebody else? Yeah. Why, why was I born in America and not in the most indigenous parts of Africa right now where people are being slaughtered for even mentioning the name Jesus? Right. You put me in a free context that one day I could hear your voice and be able to worship you in spirit and in truth and in public. Why have you blessed me the way you have blessed me? He says, Paul says, that you're God's inheritance. Mm. You're valuable to God. And even though you may not know how valuable you are, the Spirit of God through Paul is giving us this answer today. It says that, that, that you, you have to know why God called you to mm. himself. Yeah. For every person under the sound of my voice, there's a calling for you. Thank you. And if I went around and I asked you, what is your calling? Could you tell me? Why did God call you? Why did he save you? Why did he preserve you? Do you know? And if you don't know, here's what I'm going to pray for you, that the eyes of your understanding will be enlightened. Yes. Yes. That God will give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of him so you can know why he called you unto himself. Yes. I'll end right here. I'll pick up the next, next, next stuff next week. That in verse 18, that the eyes of your understanding will be enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of his calling. And what is the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints? I can't do it to finish it today. Finish it next week. Stand to your feet. Hallelujah. Okay.